Good morning. I wanted to start off by telling a funny story. This is my dog, Buddy. He's not very small. And the other day, I happened to see a peacock in my backyard while I knew Buddy was out there. And a peacock is pretty big. It's about this, It's larger than a chicken, of course. I guess it was one of my neighbors. It flew into my backyard. It was being curious. And I thought, something bad was going to happen. I thought surely Buddy was going to eat and kill this peacock. But he was over in the corner of the yard where I couldn't see him. And I watched the peacock slowly go over there towards him. I couldn't see what happened because it was behind a tree and some shrubs. But next thing I know, Buddy comes yelling out behind, just crying. And evidently this peacock, I don't know if it scared him. He was terrified by its beauty. My girlfriend said that they're mean. Maybe it maybe it poked him and hurt him, but I don't know. Anyway, the peacock won that battle and later flew off again into someone else's yard. But Buddy was Buddy lost his his match with the peacock. I am going to talk about parasites. And we talked a little bit about parasites before. We have parasites like mosquitoes that come and suck our blood for their food. Your dogs have lots of different types of parasites like fleas and ticks. They also get worms that they pick up through their feet or when they eat nasty stuff. Uh, They can get parasites that are in dirty water. I've actually had this one before myself. When I lived in South America, you also give your dogs shots so they don't get hookworms, which also when I was living in South America, lots of kids and people have hookworms in their stomach that that eat your nutrition. They eat the vitamins and nutrition that you get out of the food that you eat. These parasites get it through your blood. And there's actually a horrible thing. I've had two dogs that had heartworms before. They can die from heartworms. Of course, fleas and ticks, they're just annoying, but they don't die from that. And you don't die from Giardia either. But you you can die from heartworms, but you won't die from hookworms either. They just make you weak because they're eating your nutrition. They're taking away the vitamins and nutrition that you're getting from your food. Again, um, these are the types of worms that people can get. And we get shots when we're babies that prevent some of these parasites. But at the same time, the way that we don't get these parasites anymore is by not eating dirty food. We don't eat outside where flies can get on our food. We also wear shoes so that we're not walking through mud that has the eggs of these worms in it and they can they call it they can get through your feet. So, those are reasons why we don't have these parasites anymore. We don't think about them. But naturally animals have parasites. And we read that strange animal friends book where there were some birds that come and pick the parasites off of other animals. And so there was like the birds were helping the animals by eating their parasites off of them. And then those animals were helping the birds by providing them a quick and easy meal. Not quite like McDonald's, but pretty quick and easy. So today we're talking about mistletoe, which is also a parasite, but it's not a parasite to animals. It's actually a parasite to trees. In my yard, I have lots of trees and I have par- I have mistletoe and way up in the trees. You can see it in the winter because in the winter the trees lose their leaves and the mistletoe sticks out because it does not lose its leaves. It's called an evergreen plant. It means it stays green in the winter. So in the winter around Christmas mistletoe is really popular because people liked it because it's an evergreen plant. Just like how we celebrate the Christmas tree, the pine tree, because it's an evergreen plant and stays green during Christmas. People often decorate their house, their doorways with mistletoe. And somehow over the years, people began this belief that it was a symbol of peace and love. And now if you get caught under the mistletoe with someone, you're supposed to kiss. So you hear it in 
you hear them mention mistletoe in Christmas songs. But people do come over to my house often in the winter, and they will see mistletoe in trees, and they tell me that you have to get the mistletoe out of those trees or it'll kill the trees. I don't know if that really happens, and I don't know how I'm going to climb to the top of these trees to get the mistletoe out, so I've never thought much of it. Here's some vocabulary words. Infect just means to make you sick. Like, we wear masks, and we were using hand sanitizer to make sure we didn't get infected with COVID. Nutrients is just the things that you get from your food that help you grow and live. You can't live without nutrients, and nutrients is the whole reason why we eat. And I get a parasite. I did not know until I read this article. It can be a plant or an animal or fungus that lives on or in another living thing called the host. A parasite gets its food and energy from the host organism. So we start off here with unlikely, an unlikely parasite, the mistletoe. <clears throat> During the holidays, many people hang mistletoes over doorways. People share kisses under this evergreen plant. It is a popular Christmas tradition. But don't let the image of a romantic plant used during the happy times of the holidays fool you. In the forest where they're from, mistletoes can do some real damage. Let's take a look at how and why. The mistletoe plant is evergreen. This means it has leaves that remain green throughout the year. It is also poisonous and has white berries and small yellow flowers. The mistletoe lives on other plants taking water and nutrients from these plants. For this reason, mistletoes are considered parasites. See the white berries and the teeny tiny yellow flowers. Those white berries are poisonous to us, so please, if you ever do see some mistletoe on the ground that's fallen from trees, do not touch it or eat it. It could, it could burn your skin and make you not feel so well. The white berries of the mistletoes contain seeds. Some birds and mammals like to feed on these berries. When they do, the seeds may attach to the animal eating the berries. The animal may carry the seeds to another part of the tree or shrub. They may also carry the seeds to another plant altogether. The seeds start to grow roots that dig through the bark of the tree or shrub. The roots grow into the tissues of the plant they've taken over. That's how mistletoes take nutrients and water away from the host plants. Mistletoe can be hard to remove once it infects a plant. <clears throat> Excuse me. The best way to fight off a mistletoe infestation is to cut off the infected branch completely. If the mistletoe takes over more parts of the plant, it can start to weaken the plant and make it harder for it to grow. So it doesn't say that it kills the tree, but it will weaken the tree and make it hard for it to grow. As mistletoes grow in the trees, they become a thick mix of branches and stems. This big mass is sometimes called a witch's broom. Some animals nest in these witch's brooms. These animals include chickadees, house wrens, and most coopers, hawks. Doesn't say why it's called witch's broom. You're going to have to infer that on one of the questions. But the important thing to get out of this article is that mistletoe provides a nest and food to some birds. But it's also a parasite to trees. So it's both good and bad, depending on if you're a tree or you're a bird. <clears throat> it never explains where the word mistletoe came from, but it was two words that mean two different things. Um, part of the word means branch from a language that existed before English. And the other part of the word actually means bird poop, because when birds ate these berries, they pooped out the seeds. The seeds then grew on the tree branches, and people knew that that's the way it was being spread, was by birds eating the seed, eating the berries and pooping the seeds. But 
I think that's all of my video, or it's ending soon. Again, you're going to answer the questions. We'll go over it tomorrow in class. Thank you for watching the video.